One thing about living in Ohio is there's a lot of variation in temperature. Right? There's a quote. Um, I joined Dollar Shave Club, and there was a quote on they send you like these little pamphlets. Um, they call it like the bathroom minutes, which is funny because it's a play on word. Minutes can be like a report, but minutes can also be time. So, haha. Ha. Um, and it was a quote from, oh, I forget which author. Really, really famous author. Steve Jobs. I'll have to bring it in. It talks about like, I have experienced like 147 different seasons all within the span of one springtime day. Or something like that. And it's, it's pretty funny. But we've got a lot of variation in our temperatures. So city A, we don't know where these cities are. We've got two cities that we collected data on. City A's data is represented right here. City B's data is represented right there. You must choose to live in one of these cities just based off temperature. Obviously, there would be more things that go into your decision. So justify your choice based on at least one measure of center mean, mean or median or variability. So take a second. Do whatever you want with this data. No, you got to either look at measures of center or measures of variability. So by you asking, can I just observe it, you're going to sit there and do nothing. When statisticians observe data, we start asking questions about it. How far apart is it? How close together is it? What's the average compared to the mode compared to the median? Like, What's the date? 20. Sorry, in middle school, one of the first things they teach you to do is repeat yourself. Because in middle school, one of the first things they do is teach you to repeat yourself. <laughs> hey, does not take your mouth to figure these things out. So if I was you, I'd just think about mean, median, mode, range. If you're going to get to interquartile range, you're going to get a bit more complicated. I did. They even had a bagel for breakfast. Now, I think it was a misnomer because it was called an everything bagel, and I swear it didn't have everything. We need to verify with each other, so please don't sit here and wait for somebody else to calculate. Do the calculations so we can check with each other. So, Andrew, why is your hand up? What do you got for me? Average for A. Average for A, what'd you get? I got 54.6. Oh, I got 54.6. Yes, yeah. 54.6. Yeah. What about the median, the middle value when in order? These data sets are not in order. For shame. Now I could look, and both of them have 12 values. So I know that the median will be values 6 and 7, those two middle terms. So I could take away 5 of the lowest and 5 of the highest to find where the middle is. So remember, for city A, So there is no mode. So we could use the symbol empty set, not zero. It's empty set. So you just call it empty set. Yeah. Mean for B, what'd you get? 75.75. Ooh, 75.75. Is it okay if I do that? Is it okay what? If I did it, but I also did it in the it. Yeah, that's fine. So we've got our averages. If you look at Ohio's average temperature, we've got really cold winters sometimes. We've got really hot summers sometimes, but those extremes kind of cancel each other out. Because when we're talking about averages, we're like meeting in the middle, right? So yeah, Ohio's average might be somewhere around 60, 50, 60, depending on how cold or how warm it was that year. But if you're going to look at where you're going to live, you don't just care about 
average temperature, right? Somebody could tell you, hey, on average, whatever, but that's not just what you care about. Who said that? The range is 61. So why do you care about range? Because it could be from like, it could start at zero degrees and like go all the way up to 120 degrees, but the average is like super normal temperature and you could just think, oh, it's super normal. So the temperature there is like super normal. Yeah, you could have an average of 60. 60 would be like in the middle, right? Between your zero and 120. But if my temps range from zero to 120, Quite frankly, I would rather have temperatures range from negative 20 to 100 because I don't like hot weather. So then I not only care about the range, I also care about the min and max, right? So you said the range is 61 for which set? A. A? 17. That's a, huh, that's a little bit different. Not, not even trying to make the joke because range is different, but this is way different. So, Whitney, where would you choose to live and why at this point with what we've looked at so far? Excuse me? City A, why? Because, like, I don't know, I like warmer temperatures. Okay. That, that's good enough right there. You like warmer temperatures. And city A, with it having a, or, sorry, well, you said you live in city B because you like higher no, temperatures? A. Well, city A's no. average temperature is lower. No. Now, its range is bigger, yeah. which means it has more fluctuation in the temperature. So you, you like changing yeah. temperatures. Yeah, I don't like the same. Okay. Sean, where would you live? I like city B. I like warmer environments. Yeah. Okay. Like Ohio would be uh, each day would be like 80 degrees. Yeah, this range of however long they collected data from, average high temperatures from January to December. So these are the high temperatures in these cities. There is a variability of 61 degrees in the high temperatures. Well, if in one month my high temperature is 30, and my other month, my high temperature is 90. Yeah, There's my 60 high. degrees of variability. Yeah. Ellie, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, I live in City A because I grew up with like, cold temperatures, like cold, very cold winters, and kind of hot summers, so I like it better. Yeah, we get okay. to those warmer days here, right? 83, that's a warmer day. And this only goes up to 85, so it's not that City B is dramatically hotter. It just, it's just more consistent. It's yeah. just more consistent. This I mean. lesser range will give you, and I'd love you guys to make the note, more consistency. More consistency. Yeah. I honestly don't think I would ever live in city A or city You pretty A. much do. Yeah, yeah, this, this would probably be Ohio data. Yeah, Think about it. January, February, March, April, May's high temperatures of like 70, June, July. Now, this, it, we'd probably get higher than this, actually. So this is a more temperate climate than us because um, June, July, August, like we're pretty hot in August. Um, but still, this is like the average high temp. So there are some colder days. If you average out the high temperatures, then this could very well be Ohio's data. The reason like, I don't want to live there is because I, like, if it doesn't go low enough, or I mean, high, the high temperatures I'm okay with, but the low temperatures, it's like not low enough. But that, that's not the absolute high temps. It's the average high temps. Oh, it is. So you could still in that month have a couple days that get to 100 degrees, but if you had a couple days that were only at 60 degrees, those average to 80. Yeah, so this city, to me, when I look at this data, would be boring. Yeah. Yeah. In January, my high temps are 68. In the summer, my high temps are averaging in the 80s. I get back to fall, winter, and I'm averaging 70s to 60s. Like, give me some weather changes. Give me some snow. Like, I like the seasons, but if you don't, 
maybe you want to move out to a more consistent thing. Well, like, I don't like how when I take notes, though, like if they're small, I'm like, cool, but when they take notes, how would you do this? Right, if it's just cold, it's kind of lame. Let's compare pizza companies A to B. Sorry, we gotta keep moving. You have collected data. Maybe this I convince your parents to order pizza. Mom, Dad, I need to collect data. We need to order pizza twice a week for three weeks. So, you order from pizza company A and pizza company B every week. You track how long it takes them to get the pizza to your house. So, you're hosting a party. It starts at half an hour. You've got to make a decision where do you order your pizza from. Now, here's the key. This is not just analyzing data for the sake of analyzing data. You're analyzing data because you've got to make a choice right now. Your party starts in 30 minutes. So take a moment, look at the data, find some measures of center, measures of variability, tell me what your choice is and why. Yeah, minutes. Question or answer? Answer. What'd you find? So, I'd probably do pizza on the A because pizza company B goes from 10, the range is from 10 to 60. So, that they're Ooh. constant. So, from 10 to 60, we have a range here of 50. What's our range in pizza company A? 35. 35. So, from 20 to 55. So, what we're saying with those two ranges is Pete's company A is what? More consistent. They're more consistent. More direct, more close. Not the mean of Who's they? A. A. So they have a mean. And B's mean is 41. So you said a mean of what? 37. 37 versus 41. So here's the problem though. So their averages are fairly close. Right, their averages are fairly close. So average is not a huge determining factor. Right, like our average temperatures were fairly far apart. They were like 20 degrees apart. Here are delivery times only four minutes apart and quite frankly on average they'll both be late for my party. But Something cinches your decision. Okay, well, I'm I'm dangerous. I was looking at the data and I feel like I'm going with company A because they have two. They have they have more times under thirty minutes. They have two. They have twenty and twenty eight minutes, which are under thirty minutes. While Pete's company B only has one order under thirty minutes. Also, Pete's company A has has another order that's thirty five minutes. But I feel like that even if I had to wait five minutes for a party, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I mean, unless everyone's like starving and they're about to. So essentially what you just said is what we're really get like the point of the lesson. We're looking at consistency, right? How close are you to the mean and how many times are you far away? So my average is 41, but the only reason my average is actually that low is I had a 10 minute time. If I didn't have that 10 minute time there, my average would be way higher. I don't know which direction I should be pointing because it would take longer and that would stink. Here, my times are all very close to each other. 20, 28, 35, 47. There's no dramatically lower. And actually, this one's kind of dramatically higher. It's eight more than the other ones. And most of my other differences are eight as well. So this 60, 55, 50, these are all really high. You have more data in the high range. So yeah, Pizza Company A is more consistent with a lower average. There you go. Wait, but wait, most of the time you jumped on quality, and most of the time the places that take longer, the food quality is actually like better. Not necessarily. You'd have to do some data to back that up. I I'm gonna be very critical as we go through the rest of the school year, where if you make statements that aren't like justifiably backed 
justifiably backed up with reason or like data, we're not going to let you get away with that, right? It's so like, possible that the quality is better than the time, but it's not good. It is possible, yeah. So causation versus correlation, correlation, right? There might be a correlation between taking longer and getting better food, but that doesn't mean that's a causation. That doesn't mean that when the food takes longer, it will be better. It could have taken longer just because they were busy. Like, doesn't mean my food's better. Try this on your own. We are comparing caprice and constants. Now, I feel bad when I compare people, but we are trying to determine an award. So, we are selling bicycles. There's Performance Bike Shop right down the road. Great place if you want to go um, get a job in a bike shop. This is dollars sold, and quite frankly, you could get one bike that costs that much. You buy a really, really nice bike, it could cost $3,000. No, bicycle. Literally bicycle. My road bike, I, I like made a conscious choice. In the summer, I ride a lot. My road bike was um, with my warranty package and everything was about a thousand bucks. A really nice bike is expensive, but I made that choice because for my health and for transportation and everything else, and, and I bike is like a hobby. It's like stress relief. Here's only one which is close to I know everything else is really high. So this is a really nice bike shop. So if we compare Caprice and Constance. Because a lot of what we've been talking today dealt with range and variability, let's just start by identifying both of their ranges. So find Caprice's lowest and her highest. So her lowest here is 1690, I believe. Her highest is the one that's almost five grand. What's the difference between those two? Probably carbon fiber. Um, $3,185. 3,185. And Constance's range, well, she sold one that was closer to the bike that I bought. And the highest one was here, I believe. 2,753. So Constance has a more consistent sales track, sales record. But like, think about when I'm selling jewelry. If I sell a bracelet today, and a bracelet tomorrow, and a bracelet the next day, and a bracelet the next day, is consistency always the best thing? Like, so it depends on the situation. Would a day that I sell a bracelet, three necklaces, a ring, and another um, a watch, that would be atypical, right? Not typical. It would be an outlier. It would ruin my consistency. But is it a good thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A day where I ruin my consistency might be extremely beneficial to my pocketbook. So let's move on from range. What is Caprice's average or her mean? And what is Constance's average or mean? So we're going to add all these up. And they both have eight weeks, so we will divide by eight. Do not... Well, raise your hand once you have yours, because we want to um, give everyone else a little bit of time and then verify if we got the same results. So your homework's going to be a little bit about mean absolute deviation, and then more review on measures of center and variability. So mean, median, mode, how we use those. Julian, you're 100% confident on your calculation skills, like calculator skills because you're choosing not to do it. I'm just making sure you're confident on how to calculate these. Yeah. Okay. Like when you go to type it in a calculator, just make sure that you are very comfortable. All right, we got a few hands up now. So what did we get for Caprice's average? Jeremiah, you got that? Uh, no, I have Constance's. All right, what's Constance's? I got 2,778.5. They're mine. Sweet, thank you for the verification. And Whitney, uh, Caprice's? Uh, I meant to say Elena. I don't know why. I was looking at the both of you at the same time. My brain just said Whitney. Sorry. Go again. What did you guys get? 2,789.125. Verified. One, two. So that'd be 13 cents. If we're in money, we do have to stop at the second decimal. 
mean, not have to, but we like to. Woo! So, mm, this is why I don't like being the guy in charge. I gotta decide who to give an award to. And their averages are within eleven dollars of each other. On average. So that, that's not just eleven dollars. That's eleven dollars on average. So actually, if we say that every sale, let, let's just think about this just numbers for a second. So if every sale averages out, right, they all come back to the middle, then each sale, or sorry, each week of sales, because we were dealing with week of sales, I average sold $11 less. So after eight weeks of averaging $11 less, it's really $88 after that eight week span. So Caprice has probably made $90 more for the shop. And also, there are times, days, weeks, whatever you want to say, where she blows her range, but that's a good thing. Because those weeks when we blew the range were weeks where we did really well, or was a week when we did really well. The other last thing to compare, even if our ranges were close, where does it start? Caprice's range starts at almost 1,700, whereas Constance's range starts at almost 1,200. So we don't really have to finish these notes. It's just more conversation about what we do with this. So tomorrow I will take any questions that remain from chapter 15, and then we will move on into um, our next unit on probability, getting deeper into that. And we'll talk about when we should take your test. So, thank you, guys. Um, yeah, that was sampling technique, so convenient.